Hi, welcome to this uh, video day, which is on the 16th of December, it's Sunday. Just going to be looking at a couple of trade setups today. They both include the New Zealand dollar. We're going to look at uh, New Zealand dollar, JPY and NZD CAD. Now, in terms of the NZD, we consider it the most overbought of the major currencies. And just had a little bit of downside on the CAD and JPY, but we're looking for it to really break down. It hasn't quite yet. Um, confirmed a down move but it could come in the week ahead now in terms of these trades i'll just go through a very simple entry technique also helps you define the stop loss order as well now i'm going to be looking at the technicals obviously but i'll also be looking at the sentiment behind the chart as well which for us is very bearish for the nzd so what we're going to do is go to the charts but please do keep in mind when i'm doing my analysis it is my view as of right now it can change of course in line with the market conditions if you want all our trading techniques and our daily technical analysis of 14 major forex pairs on a daily basis you can simply click on the link beneath this video and get life access to our member center right we'll take a look at nzd jpy first all right on the chart of nzd jpy daily just for new viewers i put some notes on uh in terms of the sentiment of uh two major groups which i'll explain as we do the setup now in terms of the two groups they're commercials and speculators now the data that i'm referring to here comes from the uh, cftc okay uh, from the commitment of traders report for us it's the most valuable sentiment tool in forex trading because it's telling you where the big money is sitting behind the chart okay now in terms of using the report just in brief um, commercials they're the smart money they're the hedgers they know when prices have run too far to the upside or too far to the downside so with the cot what you're looking for is the commercials to be heavily one way i hear down here they're buying and the specs to be heavily the other way specs are selling now what happens is the commercials as we come down accumulate longs bounces a bit comes down here they accumulate even more longs and the specs are doing the opposite against them and it breaks up in favor of the commercials okay so what you do is you see a move up do get a bit of sideways the commercials still remain long but then once we punch above the 77 level the commercials exit all their longs and then put in a short position start to sell heavily speculators exit all their shorts they've been hurt in that move now they want to go long okay so when we get above the 77 level towards the 78 level you're alert for a trend change if you are a cot trader it's not a timing tool okay you've got to time it technically but um what we can see on the chart is obviously we do get above 78 but you can't get to 79 there's heavy resistance here if i took the chart further to the left and we just fall back and then we come through the 78 level a bit of sideways and a red there okay so the uptrend looks to have lost momentum commercials are selling heavily specs are buying so that is really alerting us that the uh, nzd should go down or could go down okay now one thing we look for a lot and i'm sure i say this in every video is when you get a strong trend up if you're bullish you're looking for the 20-day moving average to hold pullbacks holds it there then we push on if you're a bear you want it to break well it does break here comes back up but settles on it then a nice blue through it blue to try and get through the round red blue above the 20 then this candle here looks a really good one why because it tested the round number round numbers are very important in forex trading slice through the 20 and come to the next round number now the entry is a simple round number play a lot of order flow around round numbers okay I've done videos on this which you can go and check if you wish but i'm going to draw a trajectory in there so basically what you've got is the tail there tail there tail there yeah and of course you can draw a straight there as well so plenty of resistance now at 78 we've sliced the 20 decisively nice big red 
sitting on a round number. So you want that round number clear down, okay? So don't just come in a few pips under the round number. In this pair, it varies between pairs, but I think 20 pips through the level, 76, 80. Stop needs to be back behind that red tail there, well clear of it, okay? So you're coming through one round number, stop behind the other round number, and then looking for follow through. Now, in terms of the COT, um, just for anyone who's a member, I'm going to load the spreadsheet later, but I'm just going to give you the COT net traders positions now, which are commercials three to one in terms of shorts over longs, specs two to one in terms of uh, longs over shorts. So divergence five, which is pretty decent, and it's reversed around dramatically from down here. Okay, so yeah, from our experience of the COT, that should lead to a move down to 74 and I'll explain why in a minute but I'm expecting a move back to chart low so if you come in um you've got roughly three to one to first target four to one just over the second target and the COT is on your side now in terms of this entry just the two round numbers um yeah with the COT we can get divergence the way we've got it at the moment we we'll do that quite frequently okay um, also helping us with our target. Now, in terms of why I think we could go all the way back to the lows is because the NZD said this in previous videos, the whole move up was a short squeeze, nothing more, nothing to do with bullish Kiwi, okay? So, yeah, there's not going to be more buying, I don't think. There could be, of course. On the other side, you've got the Yen. Um, we're just heavily bullish of that longer term uh, which I've done numerous videos on. And uh, yeah, NZD proxy risk, JPY safe haven. We've got a lot of nervousness around at the moment. I think the Kiwi could be going down. Uh, so if you're new to our videos, um, seriously, the COT, great help. Uh, and it's totally free as well. And anyone can yeah look at the data and use it. I just think it's a fantastic tool, but regular viewers know I do. So anyway, we think it's going down if that 77 level is decisively taken out. So it's one to keep an eye on in our view. Now let's move to our next position, which is going to be CAD. No, is it? Uh, sorry, it's NZD CAD, isn't it? Right, next chart, let's have a look at it. All right, uh, on the NZD CAD uh, daily chart, we did look at this one last week. And uh, there hasn't been much movement, actually, but it's a pair of really... Uh, like the look of, so I wanted to look at it again. Last week we didn't think we would power on above the 92 level and get up to 93. Uh, we didn't, but we haven't fallen much. It's down to the next round number, but uh, we're through it and through the 20-day moving average. So I think this one could confirm a nice move down. I'll draw my levels in a moment, but let's just look at uh, how the commercials and speculators have been moving in this contract. When we started to fall down here, Okay, towards uh, where we found support. Heavy commercial buying, heavy spec selling, biggest in years, okay? And it eventually breaks in favor of the commercials, gets above the 20 day move in average, comes back, we find some support in these three candles here, then we're off. We just keep going up. Don't touch the 20, and then we get towards the 91 level. Commercials just exit their big long position specs exit their short position now this isn't quite the same setup as earlier because on the cot report this week we don't have that really big commercial selling coming in and spec buying against um the commercials yeah it's a fairly neutral position but the fact that the commercials have just really bailed out of what was one of the biggest positions they've had net long for a good while um indicates this trend could be exhausting. And I'm also gonna just quickly look at these big fundamentals in fav in terms of the NZD and CAD. This is our reading, okay? Uh, we basically think Canada or Canadian dollar the strongest commodity currency is going forward long-term, why? Uh, Canada exposed heavily to the US economy, New Zealand heavily exposed to China. US economy is in far better shape than China, okay? Also trade wars between the US um, and China. I don't see an easy solution there. 
I just think that will weigh on the Kiwi more than the CAD. Um, interest rates going forward favour the CAD. And the, the Bank of Canada was a little bit more bearish or dovish recently uh, than the market expected. But it hasn't hurt the CAD. Okay, the CAD has actually strengthened. Okay, definitely favour the CAD going forward there on the interest rate differentials. Um, that's despite the dovish Bank of Canada. The interest rate outlook still favours Canada over New Zealand. Risk off, risk off even, uh, sorry, also favours the Canadian dollar. It's going to be the strongest of the three uh, commodity currencies. Uh, if we get risk off, obviously the AUD, the other one. So what we've got effectively is, um, we look at this tail over here last week that tried to take out the 92 level decisively and felt that, you know, the NZD wouldn't do it. We've already said this is mostly a short squeeze. And yeah, but did I say that when we were looking at the NZD JPY? It's mostly a short squeeze, not to do with uh, bullish Kiwi fundamentals. Kiwi went up across the board, okay? And struggling to get above the level here, you know, the momentum, yeah, kind of slows and we roll over back through 92. Now we're just through 91. Draw trajectory in. Okay, so we're just through one round number and we failed to take out the other round number. So entering this one, you want to get clear of that tail there. Clear of round number turbulence. I'm going to say in this one, uh, coming in fresh, 1975. Then see if she runs. Stop back behind. There's really three tails there, okay? So it could be a good 10 or 15 pips back from them. Then see if she runs. Um, where would be the first stop on the downside? Well, the first level really, I think, would be there. I think we'll actually overrun this level, but you can see obviously candles trying to get through the level there and then we take it out. So down towards 87, I think we'll overrun this level though. Um, that's just my gut feeling. I think we'll go to at least 86 and probably all the way back to chart lows. So if you came in and put your stop back there, um, you've got roughly a three to one in terms of risk reward to first target we run on to second target which is longer term obviously we have to look at this trade as it progresses but yeah I think we could um, that would make the trade you know a really good one but of course it's got to get there it hasn't quite confirmed it's broken down yet so don't get ahead of ourselves um, so yeah like I said uh, this entry very simple two round numbers using commercials big fundamentals as backup and uh, yeah, I like this trade setup. Someone asked me, would I do very well if I just did technicals and ignored sentiment? Which is an interesting question, actually. Um, in recent years, I've tended to use sentiment behind the technicals because I just think the markets have got far more noisy. Um, so I think using the, the sentiment to back up the technicals is useful you know you know i remember center a good few years back mostly it was technical um now most setups will use the sentiment uh behind the charts i really do think it helps you know in terms of your entry your stop placement and also yeah setting a target um so these two pairs i think we'll see obviously how they go in the week ahead uh, be interesting week, uh, I think, hopefully. A lot of people think it kind of slows down as we get into December. Uh, my uh, experience of this is that December is normally a good month, particularly towards the end and as we turn into the first week of January. There's normally some really big moves that form up in that period. Um, and you look back on it historically, it's normally when the majority, you get more, sorry, you get more big trends form. I think the dates are between the 26th of December and the uh, 10th of January than any other period of the year. It might not happen this year, of course, but uh, uh, on the lookout, let's see if we get some decent moves. Um, that is, I think, all we need to cover. Yeah.
So that is the video for today. So thanks very much for watching me as per usual. Take care and have a good trading week.